Okay, so good morning. So in today's class, we'll derive the equation of transfer and look at some solutions to the equation of transfer. This is a fundamental fundamental importance in atmospheric science, uh, particularly because radiation is a source term in the dynamics models, and radiative heat transfer is also very very important in satellite remote sensing. Okay, and also we would like to know from the equation of transfer and the energy equation, we'd like to know the dt by d dt by dz in the atmosphere and this thing many we want uh, and also we want to know the heating profiles in the atmosphere and all that and with which we will be able to predict okay. So the equation of transfer it is called the radiative transfer equation. So, let us derive the equation for infrared radiation. Okay, because it's of importance to us in remote sensing. So, we already saw this in the last class. d a lambda minus d s is minus. This is uh, the extinction or the attenuation suffered by radiation as a consequence of absorption and scattering by the atmosphere okay and alpha lambda so this is the spectral this is called the spectral absorptivity Spectral means the monochromatic or particular wavelength lambda of a layer means layer in the atmosphere. Suppose I derive it in my radiation class for mechanical engineering students, I will not say for a, I will say layer for me will be like this. There is a heated wall, it has an emissivity, I am finding out how the radiation is spreading. This could be a furnace, okay, combustion chamber and so on, but now layer is different here. In atmospheric science, the layer is the layer of the atmosphere. So, so this is that is isotropic scattering. Okay. So the dA lambda by is basically if you look at the emission part which you have not considered so far the intensity will change with respect to S by epsilon lambda B lambda where epsilon lambda is the spectral emissivity. Okay. Now, what is the problem? We have one more property, right? So, we will have to get information on this spectral absorptivity. So, what is the connection between these two? How do you think you can establish a connection between these two? Let me take that. Uh, you understand my question? How do you establish the connection between the two? Okay. Tell me. Huh? You have more properties to determine, right? So it is going to be a problem for you. Okay. How do you deal with that? So I am going to say this is from Kirchhoff's law. I was just flipping through the notes to see whether I am using kappa lambda or alpha lambda, okay, so that I do not want that way. 
okay this is fine now kappa lambda was something else no view kappa lambda was what what did he what is the definition for kappa lambda huh absorption coefficient okay so this is absorptivity so this absorption coefficient so i just got a doubt whether i'm messing up with so it is fine no there is kappa lambda into rho into fine now why this how do you know this correct what is this the da lambda by ds is equal to b lambda into t there is no need that the atmosphere atmosphere must be a black body if it is not a black body it should be multiplied by an efficiency factor so epsilon lambda is nothing but i lambda emission by i b lambda of t okay at a particular temperature at a wavelength what is the emission the spectral emission from a actual surface from actual uh, surface or volume or whatever divided by whatever is whatever is emitted by a black body at that temperature and, and that wavelength so it is a non dimensional parameter which is which varies between 0 and 1 if it becomes 1 it becomes a black body if it is 0 then it is no longer under consideration but now if you look at radiation falling on an object so now now we are going to side story hmm? let us get back to the uh, let us get back to the equation of transfer after a couple of minutes now we already saw if radiation is incident g lambda incident this could be g lambda reflected g lambda absorbed mm. it comes out of the layer it is g lambda transmitted If radiation is falling on this duster, what will be G lambda transmitted? Zero. But if it is a glass, it will be non-zero. Atmosphere will allow, right? Yeah. If atmosphere is completely transmitted, zero is gone. You cannot see the sunlight. Okay. So even uh, even with clouds, it will allow. And clouds don't cover all the time. They cover up the atmosphere all the time. All right. So if you look at radiation falling on a surface, a portioning of radiation falling on a surface. Okay, so by energy balance, <coughs> dividing by G lambda incident throughout, you get rho lambda spectral reflectivity plus alpha lambda spectral absorptivity plus tau lambda spectral transmissivity equal to 1. This is basically what is happening to the incoming radiation. It has got nothing to do with the black body characteristics of a particular body or what is its temperature and so on. Okay, though its absorption can be related to the temperature. Okay, it is more dependent on the temperature of the surface which is giving the radiation. Correct? But now emission, emission is because of rotational, translation, vibrational energy of the molecules and because of Provost law any body can be more than uh, at a temperature greater than 0 Kelvin, uh, at a temperature greater than 0 Kelvin will emit radiation. Therefore, this emission and absorption are completely different processes. So it is very difficult to logically, it is very difficult to logically establish a relationship between emission and absorption. Okay. So we will have to take recourse to thermodynamics or you have to take recourse to experiments but such a relationship can also be figured out experimentally or empirically 
through experiments okay so now let us see a simple proof of the kirchhoff's law consider an isothermal enclosure completely evacuated it is completely evacuated it is at a temperature T ok now I place a body which has a body which has got a spectral absorptivity of epsilon lambda spectral emissivity of spectral lambda and spectral absorptivity of alpha lambda initially it is at a temperature T1 situation clear a hollow sphere evacuated it is maintained at a temperature of T how by circulating hot water cold water something I do something ok. Now, I put a body in the middle how do you put the body do not ask me all that I make a hole I put it and close the hole I mean let us not worry about it is hypothetical experiment ok. Now, that body is initially hot T1 is greater than T what do you think will happen after some time uh, what is that ah, equilibrium will be reached suppose this is a small body small body in large enclosure both will reach a temperature of T otherwise some temperature in between so that depends on M C M 1 C 1 M C 1 M 1 C P 1 M 2 C P 2 do not get worried about all those uh, thermodynamic calculation As, let us assume that that body reaches a temperature of T at that point in time the net radiation on that body has to be 0 ok otherwise it will emit or absorb radiation it will receive or send back radiation to a body at the same temperature which will violate all right the second law of thermodynamics. Now, let me put band, pa band pass filter this band pass filter allows radiation from this body to reach the enclosure only if it is in a narrow interval of d lambda about lambda and this d both d lambda and lambda are under my control. I can keep d lambda very small and lambda I can change from 0 0.1, 0 0.2 whatever ultraviolet oh, you name it ok anyway I am not going to do the experiment it is all a thought experiment. So, I can have a band pass filter for any d lambda about lambda. Now, only radiation in that band will be allowed to reach whatever radiation outside this band will simply come back to this. So, under these conditions from the second law of thermodynamics we know that any net the net rate of radiation exchange from the body to the surroundings or to the enclosure has to be 0. Therefore, whatever is emitted by the body which is given by epsilon lambda I lambda of T d omega. So, a cos theta factor will come now over the full solid angle will be equal to whatever is absorbed, but whatever is absorbed also will it will it will absorb only in the same band pass filter anything this also will this will obstruct anything outside that band. Now, Now, the whole point is after it has equilibrated after it has equal so hmm, this is T 1 after it has equally equilibrated is also I B lambda of T ok sorry it is actually epsilon of I B lambda into T 1 into alpha lambda into I B lambda of T because we are already putting epsilon lambda into I B lambda right. Okay. Now, what has happened is that 
T1 has become T. So, now I can repeat the experiment ad infinitum for other values of lambda and I can prove that epsilon lambda is equal to alpha lambda. If I integrate from lambda 0 to infinity, I can also prove that epsilon is equal to alpha which is the Kirchhoff's law. Okay. I can make it more threateningly formal by, by saying that I am allowing radiation only in a particular direction of theta and phi and I can prove that So, the directional spectral emissivity equal to directional spectral absorptivity this is the most general form of Kirchhoff's law already we are assuming that it is diffuse that means the directional dependence is gone and all that I do not want to go so deep because our goal is not to study more about Kirchhoff's law our goal is to study the equation of transfer all right. So, I, this is fine now later on it is you can prove that even without this enclosure model it is positive it can be proved that from thermodynamic it, it is proved it is so intuitive that epsilon lambda must be equal to alpha lambda. The major advantage is there is no need to measure epsilon lambda separately that alpha lambda which you got by kappa nu i nu yesterday we saw all the Doppler broadening, Lorentz broadening and all that with that you high tran database, mod tran database, low tran database you will be able to get absorptivity. Now, use the Kirchhoff's law and then kill the emissivity by saying equating emissivity to absorptivity is that okay? All right. Now, side story is over. Therefore, that is it. like it correct. Right side is the source term the emission term the first term on the left hand side the rate of change of the radiation intensity with uh, distance the second term gives you the absorption or the attenuation and the right hand side is the second term is the decrease of I lambda because of extinction by scattering and absorption the third term is the augmentation by emission okay. Ah, I made a mistake here. I did not use the Kirchhoff's law. I did not make a mistake. I can use the Kirchhoff's law. And what should you do with the right hand side? Ah. So, consider the case of weak emission and strong absorption which means okay now this is called the this is called the RT radiative transfer equation or the equation of transfer or the RT equation okay. Let us consider the case of weak emission and strong absorption. So, the right, right, right hand side term vanishes, therefore,
okay integrating from 0 to s So, for the case of weak emission and strong absorption, the radiation intensity, the spectral radiation intensity exponentially decays with distance, all right. Now, uh, this is called the Beer's law. Okay, if you recall. I should not block this camera. If you recall, if you recall when we looked at the first chapter, the second chapter, I told you that in the ocean, if you go to the ocean. Water is a big absorber of radiation. Eh? I lambda not so uh, the absorption of radiation exponentially decays with depth. Therefore, little light is available at the bottom layers. Therefore, photosynthesis it is not possible to do photosynthesis after 100 meters or so. Then, how do these organisms live here? So, some fellows are very active in photosynthesis and then they decay and die. These organisms will eat these fellows, and then there are some upwelling in some places, and this fellow goes up, comes down. So, this churning is taking place, and also because I lambda naught is greater than I lambda, the temperature at the surface is more than the temperature below. So, therefore, uh, less dense water correct, less dense water is available at the top. This makes it a stable situation, which is responsible for also for a stable climate and okay. So, this Beer Lambert's law is very, very crucial. Now, what will be the units of this? Uh, what are the units of this alpha lambda as we have? Huh? Uh, I do not know whether per meter, huh? ah, so this alpha lambda in your actual engineering radiation alpha lambda is dimension less, but in atmospheric radiation in gas radiation this alpha lambda that was going on in my mind for the past 3 minutes whether I made a mistake it is fine. Okay. Now, Marius is it okay? Yes, yes, seems like okay. Meter minus 1 into meter dimensionless, okay. E to the power of that, it has to be now. Where is the duster? This is only a asymptotic case, but the actual case when emission has to be considered, then you will watch the fun, it becomes mathematically very involved to solve it. Huh? Okay. Tau lambda is called the optical thickness or optical depth.
no units it is dimensionless ok. The question comes alpha lambda is equal to epsilon lambda when is it valid. So, please take down Kirchhoff's law is valid when Kirchhoff's law is valid when frequency of molecular collisions frequency frequency of molecular collisions is much more greater than the frequency of the radiation ok. Is it clear? Hmm. And the frequency of the collisions is much more than the frequency of the radiation uh, which is carried which is characterized by a C nu lambda all that. When is it valid? When is the frequency of molecular or where is the frequency of molecular collisions very high in the atmosphere? Where is high density? Ok, ok. So, in the lower layers of the atmosphere it is valid. So, this Kirchhoff's law is valid only up to 60 kilometers. When we say that the frequency of the molecular, when I say that the frequency of the molecular collisions is much greater than the frequency of the radiation, a particular a particular criterion is satisfied, and that is called local thermodynamic equilibrium. We say Kirchhoff's law is valid only when the frequency of molecular collisions is much much larger than the frequency of the radiation. This happens when the pressure is sufficiently high so that the atmosphere is not rarefied and the atmosphere is not rarefied up to the first 60 kilometers. After 60 kilometers it is not valid. Therefore, we say for the first 60 kilometers local thermodynamic equilibrium exists, LTE exists. Beyond 60 kilometers what do you do? You have to do molecular simulation. You cannot define something like a pressure because continuum is not valid. What is continuum? Consider a container, container volume consisting of particles. Constantly particles, constantly particles enter the control volume and leave the control volume, correct? Because particles have, there is a statistical nature of distribution of the energy of the particles. The particles have vibration translation, they have kinetic energy, potential energy, all that the particles will be moving. Suppose on a particular at a particular height, ok. Particles are continuously moving. If there are 1 million particles and some 100 or 200 particles leave, it will not make a big difference. But if there are 4 particles, if 2 particles leave, then we are it is coming, ok. Therefore, it is very difficult to def define an average property temperature, pressure, density. That means, continuum the continuum hypothesis fails. Then you will have to do molecular level simulation. Imagine doing molecular level simulation the whole of the atmosphere, if the normal simulation itself we are not able to do. It is very, very futuristic, maybe 100 years later all your laptop can solve all these problems, I do not know. Then we do not know what we will be teaching, that is a different story, ok. Right now, this continuum hypothesis helps us to do all these things. Okay, I am able to define something called spectral absorptivity, spectral and spectral emissivity, and equate it, and so on. All right, fine. So, LTE uh, exists. Local thermodynamic equilibrium.
anyway ionosphere and all that is not uh, our consideration some physicists may be of interest they they may have they have they may have interest in ionosphere and all then they may have to do some other formulation to handle okay now i am going to pronounce this uh, marius will correct me di Yeah, please help me. Schwartz. Schwartz. Schwartz is black, na? Yeah. Shield me. Um, the armor of soldier. Oh. Huh? Yeah. So say that again. Black army. Black army. Ar 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 armor. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> so this is the Schwartz shield. Schwartz. Schwartz shields equation. <laughs> Schwartz shields equation. Obviously, the German is very happy now. Okay, <laughs> this below. So this equation is called the Schwarzschild's equation. Now, this solution, uh, what we have uh, done so far, is only for the no emission case. With emission, so we'll have to do the solution now. So, yeah, before that. Uh, just hang on. Is it okay? Tau lambda. So, suppose this is the body. It has got epsilon and t. Uh, so, we are looking at. So, this is i lambda not. What is the i lambda? Suppose you are looking at some place here, then this angle is theta, then this will be uh, why? Sir, it should be tau lambda into cos theta. Are it is not that way. Mm. Please watch. Radiation from here is traveling all the way up to here. There is a gas volume. That fellow is playing mischief. He is reducing the radiation. So this I lambda is red, lower compared to I lambda not by a factor of e to the power of minus. That e to the power of minus is always varying from zero to one. Agreed. Now the straight path theta the zenith angle is zero. The straight path it travels only a distance this much. Yes. When it travels, when it goes through a slant path with the zenith angle of theta. It travels a distance equal to s by cos theta, which has to be more than the s itself. Therefore, it suffers more when the zenith angle is non-zero. And theta equal to zero is called the nadir in the satellite also. Nadir viewing. Nadir viewing means you are viewing like this. If if angle is like this, then the radiation has to go through a longer distance. It will suffer more. Okay. So, and also in atmospheric science. So people will call it different ways. Tau lambda into secant theta. By mu. Is this clear? If you look at different books, nomenclature will be different, but funda is the same for all. Now, let us, uh, I already erased it. With emission, we will see the solution. <coughs> I have to draw a picture now. Okay. This is some direction. Yes. Huh? Zero. Yes. Yes. One. Okay, yes is basically the local coordinate. We are not getting stuck to x, y, or whatever. Huh? Now, the optical depth is tau lambda 
is it okay? The optical depth of that layer is tau lambda S1 to S that is between S1 and S, okay. Now, e to the power of kappa lambda rho lambda b lambda Yeah, please take it down. This is the solution to the equation of transfer using the integral term. Okay. So, it consists of two terms. So, the first term is the I lambda of 0 I lambda of 0 that travels all the way up to S1 by suffering a depletion which is given by the exponential factor, agreed. The second term is the emission. which increases the I lambda, okay. Please note that the integrating factor in the integrating kappa lambda rho lambda all that you know. What is it kappa lambda rho lambda b lambda is it this is basically epsilon lambda which is equal to alpha lambda under some cases. This e to the power of minus tau if you integrate it you will get that. But the d to the power of minus tau is applicable from s, s to s1 only because we are taking emission in that layer Dvishri. Start and look. First time when I studied, I also had the same feeling. Radiation is difficult, do not worry about that. See, from 0 it is starting. Huh? From 0, from I lambda naught, we are trying to see how much it has suffered here. But now I am looking at only a small layer from S to S1. The emission must not be considered for the full because I am taking layer wise. Okay. So, what comes here is basically what has started from here and travelled all the way and it has suffered a depletion, but what is the local plus, what is the local emission there? That local emission I am taking a S1 to S, that is all. No, but I am not saying DS, S1 I am saying, is it okay? All right. Now, there is some very important assumption which we have to see. Uh, so, in the first term, you have got the tau lambda from 0 to S1. The first term, the tau lambda is from 0 to S1. In the second term, it is from S to S1. I have already explained why it is. If you have not understood this, you have not understood today's lecture. Whatever arrives at that point, even though it has suffered, plus whatever is locally augmented in that layer. Okay. Now, we have to look at what is called the plane parallel approximation, the most important approximation in radiative transfer. You may be wondering what type of questions I can ask in the exam. I can give you alpha lambda, I can give you I lambda not, uh, I can ask you to integrate. I can give you the kappa lambda, so many meters square per kg and this thing. 
what will be the what should be the depth of the layer such that the radiation coming out is half of i lambda i lambda naught what will be the thickness such that i lambda equal to 35 percent of i lambda naught some silly questions like that I can ask correct and if the depth the straight question will be if the depth is some 10 centimeters kappa lambda is this much rho is this much this is this much what is i lambda given i lambda naught okay now the plane parallel approximation then compare compare the radiation intensity for a straight path when theta equal to 0 as opposed to a slant path at theta equal to 60 what will be the i lambda in a direction of 45 degrees i can ask such type of question correct the plane parallel approximation As I told you the radius of the earth is 6370 kilometers but the atmosphere is only 80 to 100 kilometers then it is therefore it is perfectly legal for us to assume that all the properties are a function only of the z coordinate okay. So which means so this approximation is called this is called the plane parallel approximation. Okay. What is it? The emission in all all directions. So uh, how can we just integrate along S direction? No, in that path only. Huh? You are not understood. I can see from your eyes. You are asking the right question. It is not the flux. He is asking the right question, sir what happens if it is this path and the path is changing, I gave for one straight path, other path I have to put the mu cos theta, cos theta into d omega and then I will integrate over 2 pi or 4 pi that is coming, that is why it is calculation of flux becomes, he got fed up with me, I am obstructing, eh? uh, Akhil is now part of the NPTEL. <laughs> Is it okay? So I'm just uh, I'm just doing for one path. I'm uh, that is coming now. Okay, so it's a good question. So with this approximation, nu is my wave number. Okay, Akhil, that answers your question. This will be the flux. Okay. Now, what is that equation number? What is this equation number? No, no. We started. No. The, today we started with one, two, three. Huh? Please tell me some number. For this, for this. 5, 6, 7, 6, okay. Now, this is not frequency, this is wave number. So, F is flux. Wave number. This is upward. You have to calculate for a particular layer both upward and downward flux, isn't it? Okay. So now, uh, So you you fill this. What 
why is that cos theta coming the doubt will come because it is always d a cos theta na is always d a cos theta right so that cos theta will come the flux is on a so now for the azimuthal angle we can neglect the variation with respect to the azimuthal angle so this will become Is it okay? Cos theta d cos theta, d of cos theta is minus sin theta, right? That's okay. So. mu d mu okay the whole problem is We get the term e to the power of minus tau lambda by mu, mu d mu. What happens, Sajanya? What, what is that? Ah. So, T nu and cos theta, right? It will change with the angle, right? T nu, yeah, yeah, and then into cos theta, okay. Now, to cut a long story short, e to the power of tau by mu into mu d mu is not possible to integrate. Any problem? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh. What is the problem? How we get this? This is a long procedure. That flux to this thing is uh, uh, from intensity. You have to get the, get the flux. What is the problem? So for a leave this i nu plus or minus. If there is any intensity, from intensity you have to multiply by the solid angle because over the complete solid angle. Okay, it. I told in one class, right? So we start from this. This is a definition. Okay, over the 2 pi solid angle, I knew into cos theta is because of the dA cos theta term. Because the intensity, okay, the intensity has got the directional component, the flux is basically watts per meter square and so on. The intensity is to take care of the directional effects of radiation. That is why it has got the dA cos theta component. In the direction theta phi normal to it, in the area normal to it, all that because of the definition, always when you are converting that I to this thing, that cos theta term will come. You cannot integrate just d omega, cos theta sin theta d theta d phi will come. If you have, you still have a doubt. Watch my conduction and radiation YouTube. I have explained this fully in one lecture. All right.